I used to despise hip hop. I used to think that it was noise with no meaning. I thought that it was saturated in vulgarity to compensate for a lack of talent. I thought that it was a gateway drug for youth to become disengaged in society. I certainly didn't want to listen to it, and quite frankly, I really didn't even like talking with people who were passionate about it, because I felt like we had nothing in common. But then, I find myself working in a hip-hop music studio. Now, don't get any ideas. It was not held here against my will. In fact, I wanted to work here, but not for the reasons you may think, because actually, this music studio was a nonprofit called the David's Harp Foundation, and I fell in love with their vision to reach, engage, and equip homeless and at-risk teens. Now, when I accepted the job, I really naively thought that I could separate myself from the music and not have to interact much with this hip-hop element, but man, was I wrong. The first day I walked into the music studio, I had no idea all that went into creating a rap song or even this process of making beats. And if I'm being honest, that process of making beats can still be a little bit annoying to this day. You know, hearing the same song on loop over and over and over and over again as new sounds are being added certainly tests my patience. But then I met our students, and I, I watched as they had meaningful conversations with these instructors turned mentors, and they were laughing and smiling, and then it was time for them to engage with me, and there was pushback like a lot of pushback, and their response made me feel irrelevant and out of place and really just flat uncool. Yeah, and in, in that moment, I was driven to a place of deep curiosity and an absolute determination to connect with these teens no matter what it cost. Over the next few weeks, my frustration only grew as my lack of connection became apparent to everyone around me. But then, as I started to think about it, I realized that the issue was not in the teens that I was pointing my finger at or even in the music that I like to blame it on, but in reality, the issue was me. I couldn't even begin to have a conversation or begin to understand because my preconceived ideas and judgments and really my ignorance to this idea of culture behind hip-hop stopped me dead in my tracks. Benjamin Franklin made the statement, he said, ignorance is not so much a shame as being unwilling to learn. My ignorance and my deep desire to have a meaningful connection with our teens drove me to become a fly on the wall, to listen intently and to ask questions. I talked with our instructors and I listened to our students and the most important thing was I checked my judgments at the door. And when I did this, I saw that things started to change. I started to realize that the teens that I was talking with and the music they were listening to was so much different than this box that my judgment had confined them to. I started to see that hip hop, and it was not just a music to listen to or a pastime to engage in, but really, in its essence, it was soundtrack to culture. Jay-Z made the statement, he said, hip hop gave a generation a common ground, something that didn't require either race to lose anything, but instead, everyone gained. The more that I started to see, I watched as I saw that hip-hop was something that was deeply ingrained in our students, that it was like a tradition passed down from generations. And as I started to notice, I saw older brothers and uncles and sisters engaging with younger siblings and nieces and nephews through this common ground of music. And when I took a step back, I realized that that connection they had through music wasn't very much different than the connection that my family and I had as they passed recipes down to me. Now, that sparked a deep curiosity to learn about these sub-genres of conscious hip-hop that completely shattered my misogynistic stereotype I came in with. And I started to see that hip-hop was not just a guy with a bad attitude and a pair of headphones, that it wasn't the loud music I heard blaring through the cars, but really, it was... It was an art form, and it was about expression and connection and release. And as I started to realize this, I saw teens that were completely unmotivated in school and disengaged in all aspects of life coming in to our studio week after week with pages of new lyrics and inspirations and ways to share their voice with the world. And then I saw that hip-hop was so powerful that it actually gave a voice to so many people. And when I realized that, I knew that if I was ever going to have the privilege of speaking into these teens' lives, that I was not only going to have to understand this language of hip-hop, but 
I was going to have to speak this language of hip hop. Meet Des. Des was a 16-year-old foster care student in San Diego. She came into the studio and it was clear that music was her life and she could not wait to tell her story through music. And as that began, that process, that songwriting process, I didn't know what to expect. But as soon as the pen hit the paper, I knew that I was being invited into a deep part of her struggle and an intimate part of her story. And I'm actually going to give you guys the privilege today to be invited into that same space as you take a listen. <clears throat> always want a mom and I always want a dad. Here's a little story, it's a little bit sad. People look at me like I'm ashamed. Because of you, you done curse my name. CPS, nah, it ain't no joke. All they want to do is get you provoked. Being in the system make me so confused. Like, what did I do to light the fuse? As a parent, never tell your kids you care. Especially if you finna just disappear. With or without you, I'ma be a success. Kinda like I am acing the test. Everywhere I go, people look at me funny. But they're the ones that be looking dusty. I've been in the system for 11 years. And still, all they care about is buying their beers. Going down your path is my biggest fear. Now I realize I need to switch the gear. Now, maybe you're like me and you missed the depth of what was just communicated through those lyrics. So I'm going to ask you to please listen carefully as I repeat those lyrics without the, without the music. Always want a mom, always want a dad. Here's a little story, it's a little bit sad. People look at me like I'm ashamed. Because of you, you've cursed my name. CPS, man, ain't no joke. All they want to do is get you revoked. Being in the system has me so confused, like, what did I do to light the fuse? People look at me like I'm, a, like I'm ashamed, but because of you, have cursed my name. And never tell your, as a parent, never tell your kid you cared, especially if you're fixing to just disappear. With or without you, I'm going to be a success, kind of like I'm acing a test. People always look at me funny, but they're the same ones that are looking dusty. I've been in the system for 11 years, but still all they care about is buying their beers. The content of these lyrics is both shocking and absolutely heartbreaking. And when I heard this, I was completely caught off guard. And what was even more shocking was that every single one of these was true. I had the privilege of watching as this process un unraveled and our instructors worked with Des to carefully craft her la life story into this amazing and powerful lyrics over rhythm. And I watched as something beautiful happened that the studio was filled with laughter and smiles and creativity because in that moment, Des knew that she was in a safe place. But beyond that, Des knew that she was in a place that her voice could not only be heard, but her voice would be valued. You know, still to this day, being a part of the songwriting process is one of my absolute biggest honors and one of my favorite parts about studio life. But I need to be very honest that this process has been anything but easy because when I started on this process, I really thought that I was just learning to like hip-hop music or learning more about this language of hip-hop. But in reality, this journey became something of confronting deep judgments and acknowledging ignorance that I had. I've gone for the last two years talking with so many teens and using this platform, and I can honestly say that I've gone from absolutely despising hip-hop to actually respecting it. Now, if you would have told me that, I would have never believed you. And many times our students will walk in after school for their studio session and they'll see and they'll start doing this freestyle rap battle, and for the last two years they've tried to get me to chime in, to just try it, and every single time I refuse. And I think back to the countless teens that I've encouraged to step into the recording booth for the first time, or even the ones that I've told to face their fear head on. But when it came time for me to walk this walk that I'd been talking for almost two years, I froze. And every single time that I froze, my respect for our students only grew. But more than that, my respect for hip hop only grew. Because I saw the courage that it takes to stand in front of a room of peers and critics and skeptics alike and to proudly display your voice and to share it unashamed. So finally, one night I said that enough was enough. I went home, I closed my bedroom door, and I wrote my first rap. Now, I know, 
I didn't only write this rap, but then I went on to perform it on a stage in front of more than 100 people. Now, I wish that I could articulate to you how outside of my comfort zone I was and how absolutely petrified and nervous I was, but I also wish that I could articulate to you the depth of the struggle that our students are walking through. Like what it's like to be a teen to have to check yourself into a homeless shelter or what it's like to be in the foster care system and have parents that are disengaged and uninterested in any part of your life or even what it's like to be a teenager that's failing all of your classes and you feel unnoticed and unheard and the real issue is what's going on at home but there's no one in your life to ask about it. You see, I was this close to missing an opportunity to engage with so many people around me because I was more comfortable in my judgment, because I was more comfortable in my ignorance than ever having to confront the fact that the issue might have been me. You know, Eminem captured what I see on a daily basis with our kids when he said, I didn't have anything going for me, school, home, until I found something that I loved, and that was music, and it changed everything. You know, working in a music studio is the last place I would have ever imagined myself. Writing raps and naming albums and even talking about Kendrick Lamar's latest song, not exactly where I envisioned my life going. But I wouldn't change it for a second. You see, I decided to step outside of myself to meet someone where they were at. And let's set the record straight. I still listen to my country music, and I have not fallen in love with every single aspect of hip-hop. In fact, I've had many a conversations with teens where we talk about things that I don't like or why I despise certain parts of songs. I don't love every aspect of hip-hop, but I see the implicit value, and I can acknowledge that I still have a lot to learn but I respect this powerful platform. You know, for me, it's crazy to think that I was so close to missing the mark. So now I'm gonna ask you the same question. What preconceived ideas or judgments do you have that's creating a wall when you communicate with others? Are you okay? Are you willing to miss an opportunity to engage with so many people around you? Because it's more comfortable to stay in your comfort zone. Because it's more comfortable to sit in your judgment. You know, for me, it was writing a rap. It was embarking on this journey to learn about something that I hated. I don't know what it is for you. Maybe that wall is created by the color of someone's skin, by their religion, by their political stance, by their hobbies, by their gender, by the school they attend. I don't know what it is. But what if you were to step outside of yourself? What if you were to meet someone else where they were because it's worth it? I'm confident that if a mid-20s white gal from the South can go from absolutely despising hip-hop to not only respecting it but engaging in it, I have no doubt you can take this process and do the same. But the question is not can you. The question is will you. Thank you.